Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about how to dehydrate cottage cheese. I'm Rebecca from stockingmypantry.com. Okay, so I'm gonna first of all go over what I plan to cover in this video. As you can see, it's from a blog post, which I'll also link to because sometimes it's easier to review information in a blog. And also just in case I accidentally leave out some of the information in this video, you can refer to the blog for more information. So let's look at the table of contents. First of all, I'm gonna talk about whether or not it's safe to dehydrate cottage cheese, what type of cottage cheese to dehydrate, how to prepare cottage cheese for dehydration, and then I'm going to walk you through the actual dehydration process. I'll show you or I'll talk about the cottage cheese after three hours in the dehydrator, five and a half hours in the dehydrator, and 12 hours in the dehydrator. I'm also going to talk about how to rehydrate the cottage cheese. And then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not I would do this again. Okay, so let's get right into it. So first, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is whether or not it is safe to dehydrate cottage cheese. So uh, when it comes to food preservation, or probably just about anything in life, people fall into different camps. It's safe to do something. It's not safe to do something. you got to follow the rules exactly. You never follow rules. I come somewhere in the middle between those two things. I wouldn't really call myself a rebel. However, I do some things that some people say you can't do. Um, and my big thing is I try to research something thoroughly. And so I researched this topic as thoroughly as I could. I read a ton of blog posts, I watched videos, I did other things before even attempting to do this. And the opinions were all over the place on this one. Um, some people said absolutely not, other people said absolutely yes. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to do your own due diligence. I'm just sharing with you the process that I ended up doing and how it turned out for me. So let's go ahead and get into now the whole process that I went through in dehydrating cottage cheese. So I first wanna talk about what type of cottage cheese to dehydrate. When it comes right down to it, you can dehydrate any type of cottage cheese. But let's talk about the different options that there are. Cottage cheese typically comes in large curd and small curd, and also in 4%, 2%, and 0% milk fat. I ended up buying the small curd, 0% fat uh, cottage cheese. Now, my thinking on that was uh, large curd, you know, would take longer to dehydrate than small curd. And also, uh, you know, dehydrating, you can dehydrate things with fat in them, but the problem is that they don't uh, store as long. The higher the fat, fi <laughs> let me try again. The higher the fat content, the lower the shelf life typically. Now, I have been doing more research into this and finding that's not always the case, but as a general rule of thumb, the less fat, the better. So again, I went for a small curd, um, zero percent fat cottage cheese. But if you happen to have large curd, four percent, go ahead and do it. It should work fine. A lot of people have done it. Um, it might just take longer to dehydrate, okay? And it may not store as well. Okay, now let's talk about preparing the cottage cheese for dehydrating. Technically, you don't have to do anything to prepare the cottage cheese to dehydrate. You can just uh, I saw a lot of people just opening the tub, pouring it on or spooning it onto dehydrator trays, and that's it. Um, however, I did also come across some other people, and I thought this made a lot of sense, some other people who uh, drained off the whey as much as they could. Uh, one person used a salad spinner, and I think that's a great option if you have a salad spinner or you want to get one. Uh, there's a lot of uses for a salad spinner, and I might get one at some point, but I don't have one right now. And I had some cottage cheese in my fridge that I wanted to go ahead and get into and not wait on a salad spinner. So what I did is I, um, I had bought two 24-ounce tubs of cottage cheese. And in my case, one tub 
fit into the strainer that I had really well. So I used, I put the strainer over a bowl, as you can see, and I dumped the tub of cottage cheese into it. I then just put some plastic wrap over it and stuck it in the refrigerator. And about every 45 minutes, I stirred it and um, so that more of the whey would go through. And I had, since I had the three tubs of cottage cheese, I, you know, was mindful of the amount of time. And I, you know, just thinking of when I wanted to do the dehydration. So the first tub I left in for about two and a half hours, again, strain, uh, stirring it about every half hour, 45 minutes. And, um, and then I put it aside in a container in the fridge and then started on the next tub. And then the third tub I let uh, drain overnight, but I wasn't awake to stir it. So basically, um, that's what I ended up doing. So it, it wasn't a quick process. I think a salad spinner would happen pretty much instantly, you know, so I do recommend that. But if you have a, um, a strainer like this, then it'll work fine. Okay, so let's talk about the amount of whey that was removed from the cottage cheese. In this picture, you can see that there's about four ounces. There's actually, I, I weighed it and there was 4.55 ounces. That was from the first tub of cottage cheese. So I had a 24 ounce tub of cottage cheese. And from that, about four and a half ounces of whey drained off of it. All right, so, you know, there was still more whey on it. It wasn't like it was bone dry and that's fine. I just wanted to kind of reduce the amount of time that it would take to dehydrate. And so I got about four and a half ounces of whey off of that first 24 ounce uh, container of cottage cheese. Now you can see a picture of all of the strained cottage cheese. And I ended up with about eight cups. Now I didn't measure the cottage cheese before I did this, but I just wanted to show that I had eight cups of uh, cottage cheese that was strained. And the cottage cheese ended up weighing after straining off some whey, 54.67 ounces. And so there was a reduction of about one third of the weight of the cottage cheese ended up being strained off. Okay, so uh, it was a decent amount of whey that came off of the cottage cheese. Now, I am not into wasting food, and I want to say that you absolutely don't want to waste that whey. It's very healthy and it's actually pretty tasty. So what I did with it is I, uh, with some, I just tried it with some potato chips, kind of like a dip. Now it was a lot thinner than a typical dip, but it was very tasty. And then I make uh, green smoothies for our family every morning. And so the next morning, um, after I had drained, uh, when I got up and the final whey had been drained, all the, the whey that I had left, I used in our smoothies in place of milk or yogurt. And so that's what I did with it. Um, you could also use it in baking and, or you could make a salad dressing with it or things like that. So uh, you definitely want to use that whey. It's very nutritious, it's delicious, and this way you're not wasting anything, okay? So now let's talk about the actual process of dehydrating cottage cheese. I just want to touch very briefly on choosing a dehydrator. I have two dehydrators. I have a Kasori. Actually, I have three dehydrators. I have a Kasori and two of these uh, stackable Nesco's. In this case, I decided to use my Nesco dehydrator just because when it's something kind of messy, I think it's easier to fill up the trays on a stackable dehydrator. Um, now in this case, since I drained off so much of the whey, it wasn't really soupy. Definitely if it was real soupy, I would use the stackable one. Um, but really any dehydrator that you have will work as long as it has a temperature gauge. Um, that's really the one thing that I say, it, that's really one thing I advise all the time when it comes to um, dehydrators is there's all kinds out there. You don't have to worry too much about the, the type that you get as long as it has a temperature gauge. And the reason for that is that the temperature on the ones without any temperature gauge is really high. And, you know, it's, it's basically made so it's safe for dehydrating meat. And 
pretty much everything else that you dehydrate doesn't need to be done at such a high temperature and in fact benefits from a lower temperature. So just keep that in mind. Stackable may be easier, and but the bottom line is as long as it has a temperature gauge, you'll be good. Okay, so now it's time to put the cottage cheese that has been strained onto the dehydrator trays. So even though I had strained it, there was still some whey in it. And so on the bottom dehydrator tray, I just put a fruit leather tray. And I didn't put any cottage cheese on that because I didn't feel like it would it was necessary to use the, the fruit leather trays. Um, and also the air wouldn't circulate as well. But I did put that at the bottom so that if any way dripped through, it would catch it and just, you know, it'd be easier to clean up. On the other dehydrator trays, I used my mesh liners. And I did that because obviously just plopping the, de the cottage sheets right on the dehydrator trays, it would just fall through. But the mesh liners kind of held everything and yet allowed some air circulation. All right, so... I ended up using five trays for what had been four and a half pounds of cottage cheese. So when you plan your dehydrating, it's good to think about how many, de how much should I buy <laughs> or, you know, to fit on my trays in my dehydrator and, you know, or how many trays should I plan? Because let's say that you got a really great uh, deal on cottage cheese and you wanted to buy a bunch. It's just good to know how much will fit in your dehydrator if you have a ton, maybe you're going to have to do this a couple of times, that type of thing. So 24 ounces of cottage cheese uh, times three is about four and a half pounds, right? And I use five dehydrator trays. Now, every dehydrator is different. And so you may be able to fit more or less on your dehydrator trays. But as a general rule of thumb, I would plan on about one tray per pound of cottage cheese. And you can see that I have the cottage cheese uh, spread out pretty thinly. I mean, it's, it's as thin as I could spread it without smushing it down. And um, that's how much was on one tray. You, in the picture, you can see that. So it was slightly less than a pound. A little bit more would have fit, but I wouldn't want to go any thicker than that. So it was about a quarter inch thick, I would say. Oh, another thing that I, I want to mention is that I even though this was small curd cottage cheese, I think because of uh, straining it, some of it was a little bit compacted and there were some kind of big pieces and the the big chunks I just broke up with my spoon as I was spreading it onto the tray. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual dehydration process. I decided to dehydrate the cottage cheese at 115 degrees. Everything that I read recommended 115 or 125. I did see one video where a lady dehydrated her cottage cheese at 125 degrees. I don't know if her dehydrator ran hot or what, but it was brown when it came out. And uh, somebody in the comments asked her, well, what color was it when you rehydrated it? And she said it was a creamy color. So it it's probably would have been fine, but I really didn't want this disgusting looking cottage cheese. And since I had seen a lot of people use 115 degrees, that's what I decided to go with. So I set my dehydrator for 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, one thing really important to note is that you'll want to rotate your trays if you're using a stackable dehydrator like I did. And I'm going to just show you a picture of um, after three hours in the dehydrator. Um, this picture, it was what the top tray was like after three hours in the dehydrator. And in this picture, you can see what the bottom tray looked like after. Three, in, uh, three hours in the dehydrator. And so you can see the bottom tray was not nearly as dry as the top tray. So rotating them, what I did is I just uh, took them off and took the top tray, put it down in the bottom. I was kind of like stacking them and then just kind of stacked them in reverse order that they had been and stuck them back on. And this, you know, a lot of people think, ah, oh, rotating the trades is a hassle, but it really, it only takes easily less than a minute to do. So I do recommend that if you're working with a stackable dehydrator. Now, if by chance you are dehydrating when you're not home, it's fine. It's not going to hurt, but rotating will help the cottage cheese to dehydrate more evenly. Okay, so now here are pictures of 
what the cottage cheese look like after five and a half hours in the dehydrator. I have a picture of the top tray of cottage cheese and also of the bottom tray. Now remember, previously these were reversed. The top tray had been the bottom tray and the bottom tray had been the top tray, you know, so with rotating, they just got switched around. And I don't know how obvious it is in the photos, but they were more or less equal. So the rotating really helped the dehydration process to even out. It's coming along, but it's still very, very moist after five and a half hours in the dehydrator. So I stuck it back in the, after rotating again, I stuck it back into the dehydrator. Okay, this is the cottage cheese after 12 hours in the dehydrator. At this point, it was completely dehydrated. Um, it had just a slight yellow tinge to it but it wasn't really discolored at all. And uh, it was just nice and dry and kind of flaky. There was, I broke apart some bigger pieces. I didn't feel any moisture whatsoever. So I wanna just talk about the weight after dehydrating. Uh, this is weight, volume matters a lot when it comes to storage. Weight is important if you're uh, going to have to move something or if you're going to take a camping or what have you. So uh, remember that my strained cottage cheese was about eight cups. And after dehydrating it, it was down to about four cups. More significantly, the weight of the dehydrated cottage cheese was 11.4 ounces. Now, remember I started with four and a half pounds of fresh cottage cheese. I strained off um, the way down to, uh, and it ended up being about 3.4 pounds of cottage cheese after the way was strained off. And then when it was dehydrated, it was all the way down to 11.4 ounces of cottage cheese. So again, one of my favorite things about dehydrating is how much the food shrinks down. And that makes it an excellent, um, method for preserving food for storage, especially if you have limited space. All right, so the big question was how to rehydrate cottage cheese and how it would turn out once it was rehydrated. And I have to tell you, this was the most challenging aspect of the whole project. It wasn't hard, but it took a long time. You know, I'm used to things rehydrating quickly, sometimes even just in a few minutes, sometimes 15 minutes. Um, what I ended up doing is I took, um, a little mason jar and I put it about half full with the dehydrated cottage cheese and filled up the mason jar the rest of the way with water. And then I stuck it in the refrigerator overnight. Okay. And in the morning it was mostly dehydrated, but the, the, some of the chunks still had a little bit of bite to them. So I then, I, I put it back in the refrigerator and I wanted to experiment with another method. I put some, um, again, cottage cheese into a, a jar, put some boiling water on top and stirred it. And I let it, I let that sit at room temperature for about a half an hour, just so that the uh, cottage cheese could benefit from all that hot water. And it was at about the same level as the cottage cheese that I had had sitting overnight. Now, personally, I generally like to use my cottage cheese cold if I'm just gonna eat it like in a salad or something. Um, so I still recommend uh, putting it, if you've used the boiling water, sticking it in the fridge. So I think that's the main thing to keep in mind is that you want to allow plenty of time for the rehydration process. It's not going to be something like, oh, I'm in the mood for a bowl of cottage cheese. Let me just dehydrate some. I mean, you can do that, but it's probably going to be several hours before it's really ready to eat. Okay, so here is what the rehydrated cottage cheese looks like. And you can see, other than it being a little bit drier than typical cottage cheese, because um, after rehydrating it, you'll probably have still some water. I did drain the water off and stuck it into a bowl and um, it was a little dry, but it was, it turns out great and I definitely recommend it. Also, you can put a little bit of whole milk or cream into the rehydrated cottage cheese if you wanna add a little bit more creaminess to it, but I served it to my family and everyone enjoyed it, and so that's not really necessary. So now let's talk about how to store dehydrated cottage cheese. I personally use a food saver to vacuum seal, uh, 
most things that I dehydrate. It's not 100% necessary, but I do think it keeps things fresher. And especially if I'm doing anything like, you know, dairy, you know, cottage cheese, regular cheese, any type of meat, I always like to vacuum seal it. So I do recommend doing that. So I wanna just talk about now the final verdict on dehydrating cottage cheese. I definitely plan to do this again. Uh, it turned out great. Like I say, it, wa it wasn't hard to do. The straining it uh, isn't 100% necessary, but it will get done faster if you do strain it. And so I recommend that. Um, and I guess that's about it. I, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And by the way, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would like the video. And if you haven't already done so, if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.